Hello and evening, everyone. Welcome to the BP package presentation for Renovarch Residence by Revitalize Architects. Renovarch Residence is an office to residential redevelopment, renovation and conversion project, and is trying to be a response to the rapidly increasing vacancy rate of the office areas in downtown core of the most major North American cities, especially after the pandemic. The building that we've chosen for this project is the iconic Calgarian building, formerly known as the Canadian Pacific Railway Building, located at 205 9th Avenue Southeast, Calgary, Alberta. The original building is a 11-story office building built in 1965, which have an all-concrete structure. It has a lower floor, and the whole 11th floor of it is for mechanical equipment. Aesthetically, it has some arched stuff rounds on the first floor. For the other floors, they choose to use a uh, curtain wall system, and in addition to that, those decorative strips around the building are also concrete. We received some original drawings from Brian, who represented more, and we also very appreciate him accepting to be our mentor. The project has a total of three case studies, two from foreign countries, which is Slovakia and Greece, and the third one is local, which is Calgary, and this is a Sierra office. And all these buildings have in common as being an abandoned office building turned into a mixed residential which help us give us guidance and basis to come up with this kind of project. The building is located at downtown core along Canadian Pacific Railway, and all necessities and convenient amenities are within the facility. Our site is luckily out of the overland flow area, and due to having been a heavy dense location, there is least to find of vegetation around the site. For schematic design, we initially proposed commercial spaces on main floor and amenity spaces on second and lower floor. And from third to tenth floor, we proposed 10 residential units per floor. So that's a total of 80 units, and it's ranging from 40 to 80 square meters, which includes studio apartment, two bedroom apartment, and one den plus one bedroom. And we are reusing ex existing surface parking. Due to having existing whole mechanical penthouse floor on level 11, we wanted to make building more efficient and sustainable. So we are demolishing the existing and proposing green roof on 11th floor, and it complies with rainwater harvesting, which will occupy available spaces in the lower floor. The property's land use designation is CR20, and we're proposing a permitted change of use from office to residential commercial. Permitted FAR is 3, but the existing FAR is 3.8. So we're complying through the fact that the building was existing before properties land use designation adjustment to the current one. Considering that this site was an existing development, there were numerous relaxations we had to apply for while updating the site to the current bylaws and codes. And we implemented those relaxations into our BP package as smoothly as possible. We also did a serious revision on site's barrier free status. Our preliminary code study classified the redevelopment into two major occupancies, Group C, Residential, and E, Mercantile, total occupant load of 323, which will result in an accumulated exit width of 2200 millimeters in the form of two stair cores. For our layout design in Nova Flow, most of the building utilities maintenance and sewer is located here, as well as the rainwater harvesting tank. The type of footing here is stripped around the foundation wall and of course bed footing all over the column. And same is unknown load bearing wall. For main floor, we have a two commercial spaces and bike storage. It just has enough space to accommodate 80 bicycle stalls. Because we are using this kind of contraptions, that is vertical boost bike storage. We have a two existing stack -o. One is existing through the lobby and it's of course under the 15 meter. Another one we created has a direct exit to corridor, so it could have a direct access to exterior. And for our amenity floor, to locate our outdoor patio, we have done solar analysis on building, and the major impact after the study on our design was that we changed our patio from a northern side and moved it to the eastern side of the building. There is a flow change happening on the interior to common patio, and it's all draining to scuppers, and it's open from north to south, so it provides much more natural lighting towards the multipurpose hall and recreational room. We have three types of units, which are a one-bath studio, a one-bedroom with a den, and a two-bedroom unit. People can choose whichever system best. For the mechanical system, since we are not allowed to keep the original central system nowadays in Calgary, we choose to change it to a horizontal four pipe fan coil system for each unit. Because of those pipes are concealed in the unit ceilings, we don't have to provide mechanical shaft for each unit, which means that our units will have more rentable space. Other than that, we also provide the patios for all the units as the amenity area required by the land use bylaw. 
Due to reducing the size of the penthouse, the space was created for sustainable planning and addition of vegetation aesthetics to the city core. We chose the type intensive green roof because of the variety of plants that can be put there and we're installing benches and tables for the building tenants to use. To highlight that green roof deck, we provided wood composite pergolas and we're removing the existing long concrete strips on each facade and providing instead brick masonry column wraps. Being that the previous building has a full curtain wall, we replace it with hybrid walls for living conditions of the residential part of the building. And as a unique design feature of the 1960s, we preserved the concrete arches and renovated it, its exterior finish into a brick mason. Okay, back to the code, but now from a CD stage perspective. The official highest level reference of the building is top of penthouse parapet at 42.9 meters above grade. Code requires the building's constructability to be of non-combustible construction and sprinkler throughout. All the floors and occupancy partitions will have a fire resistance rating of not less than two hours, and this number is not less than one hour for unit and corridor partitions. One of the interesting instances of this is when a unit partition is abutting an exterior wall and a pre-rated balcony privacy screen. So we detailed this connection in a way that the FRR is maintained uniformly along the element. Last point regarding code is that all the paths of egress and travel distances are less than the required 45 meters throughout the whole building. Main the main floor of arch sorbon windows with some types are having spandrel panels. Both amenity and residential floors are covered with window walls, whereas under residential units, it has an operable awning window to give ventilation on the interior. And we provided enough details on both storefront and window wall showing jab, hand, and seal. The door schedule is a challenge for us since there are so many commercial doors need to be marked individually. The workload is just too heavy, even for four people like us. So we choose to write down some dynamo scripts to help us achieve it automatically. For our roof plan, we have developed the penthouse roof and the pergola above green roof. We have a three base on penthouse roof, also include roof access hatch here, an HVAC unit and roof exhaust, and the elevator overrun, which sloping towards middle, and everything is sloping from 2.5 to 3.1 percent. For a penthouse roof structure, we are using a steel framing structure with a steel joist. Overrun base detail has been done in such a way that it allows structural deflection and movement by providing break in a membrane and left them positively. There are two types of assemblies applied on the green roof. These are walkways and earth medium with the grass. Both types have filtration membrane over the drainage mat and a waterproofing slash root barrier membrane below it. All of the walkways are sloping to roof drain, provided three on each side of the building and two on each side of the penthouse, and all of which are below 4% slope. We implemented a trench drain on the walls that have openings and doorways to give separation of the floors. One thing about this, it's too there, and we provide a drainage layer below it as well. The typical green roof parapet has a height of 500 millimeters, and to have more barricade along the area, we added a glass railing behind it so it would give more open view to the green roof deck rather than having a whole parapet blocking it. The support for it will be mounted on the parapet wall to avoid wind movement disruption of the railing. For the building envelope, we all agree that a hybrid system is the most suitable option for our building, considering the existing concrete structure situation. When we wrap the structure, we provided vapor barrier on only one side of it to prevent the membrane from trapping moisture, which could lead to a structure damage. Due to the euro shape and the alignment of the columns, we had to fill the void between some existing wall type and the structure with insulation. In the continuation of the envelope discussion, we had a few complex examples of connections between envelope-only systems and other assemblies, and what made those instances this challenging was the task of combining and properly enclosing the envelope and lapping two different systems of membrane implementation on an existing structure. Final note regarding the building envelope is that all membranes were specified from local sources based on the local climate standards and usually from the same manufacturers to both reduce the cost and increase the envelope's compatibility and longevity. Greenwalk Residence is a revitalized attempt to deal with the downtown vacant spaces and dead zone issues as well as to go along with the continuous manifestation developing those dead zones. 
as response to those issues in an eco-friendly and community-oriented manner. From a financial standpoint, it makes far more sense to convert the spaces into something such as residential and commercial that can be turned into a revenue stream for the building owner. Last but not least, and for us most significantly from a social perspective, not only will this kind of project generally add more life, safety, vibrancy to the downtown area, but they will also provide the affordable housing for those who need it and encourage vertical growth rather than a horizontal speed. And that's everything for our presentation. And thank you on behalf of the Revitalized Group for attending our capstone presentation.